So something a little bit different on the bench today then, what I've got is a uh, hard drive enclosure which is also a portable NAS drive. Now it has got its own internal battery and you can use it as a power pack as well. But uh, you can actually connect to this uh, by using the wireless connection or you can use uh, the uh, Ethernet port here or the good old fashioned USB cable here. Now I did have this uh, given to me by a friend, he actually purchased this uh, six or seven months ago now and uh, he has mentioned it a few times to me but uh, he uh, used it for a couple of days and then he gave up on this and he actually purchased something else and uh, what he's actually said to me is the wireless range on this unless your laptop is uh, virtually just sat next to it on the bench the uh, signal is extremely poor so you might as well just use the uh, SATA cable to connect to it rather than the wireless because uh, the range is really really poor and uh, he did say to me if you put it in the other room then uh, you've got no chance you've got to have this sat next to the actual laptop you want to communicate with so before we actually take a look on the inside to see uh, what's actually going off on the inside of this I've got a little test that I can show you so, so just how bad the uh, wireless range on this is now I have had a uh, look around using Google and uh, there are a few people that uh, complain about the range on this um, and also the uh, actual speed that it transfers files at and uh, you know there are a lot of people out there that do complain about the wireless there's also people that complain about it uh, crashing in between file transfers and things like that but uh, what I'm going to do is pop it open so we can have a look uh, what's actually going off in here but uh, this little test will uh, show you just how poor the uh, range is on this thing just in my lab here and uh, no I haven't taken it uh, apart yet I've uh, just switched it on I'm using the same settings that my uh, friend actually uh, set this up on and uh, he's also included the hard drive with this he doesn't want that either so I think it's just got a 250 gig hard drive in here I can't uh, remember now so uh, what I'm going to do is just do this uh, little test just to show you how poor it is and then we'll take a look on the inside and see what's going off so I've got Wi-Fi analyzer running on the tablet here and I've got the enclosure right up next to the tablet itself the tablet has just got its stock Wi-Fi antenna inside so nothing special there and the curve here the red curve is uh, the NAS enclosure here it's got the uh, name file vault so uh, that is the uh, enclosure when it's uh, buttered right up next to the uh, actual tablet here so it should be getting the uh, best signal it possibly can now what I'm actually going to do is just uh, get hold of the uh, enclosure here and I'm just going to put it behind my back and then you're going to see a uh, quite big drop in uh, the signal strength there of the enclosure itself which really should not happen especially when this thing's in the same room as the tablet you wanted to actually uh, run it on so let me put this behind my back and you should see a big drop in the signal strength and there you go massive massive drop in the signal strength in fact it's almost lower than uh, my actual network here in the house and the router is downstairs and trust me if I put this little uh, NAS enclosure downstairs in the next room you would not be able to see any signal strength whatsoever it's just non-existent so again just with the action of putting it behind my back the uh, signal drops completely off Well, there's definitely something not right there just with the action of me putting this behind my back should not cause the uh, signal strength to drop off like it is doing especially when it's still in the same room as the tablet it shouldn't affect it like that just with the action of me putting it behind my back so let's open it up then and see what is uh, actually going off inside this and it may not be the uh, problem with the antennas themselves it may also be a problem with the firmware but uh, what I'll do I'll modify the antennas first just to see if that actually improves anything now I have had a uh, quick look around about uh, the information I could get about this uh, little NAS portable NAS enclosure and apparently 
there is uh, firmware out there on the uh, DDWRT forums and uh, their download sites now you've got to be careful because it does set state that there are two versions of this and the firmware will only work on one of those versions so I've got to do a bit more looking into that but uh, it's also uh, apparently the uh, company that makes this also uh, ripped off their firmware on the uh, DDWRT forum and uh, actually put their own uh, user interface on it and that's what we've actually got running on this apparently is a uh, stripped down version of that uh, DDWRT firmware but uh, unless there's any kind of uh, JTAG um, interface on this I wouldn't really attempt to uh, flash it with uh, that firmware because if you haven't got a JTAG interface then if something goes wrong you've got no chance of getting it back again so we'll have a look at that as well so I've got the enclosure off then it was just held in place with the uh, six Phillips head screws and uh, it's nice that they've actually got metal inserts into this uh, plastic housing here so that's not too bad I suppose so now that we've got the unit open you can clearly see that it does have two antennas and they run down the sides here and to be honest that's probably the best place you could actually put them so now that we've got the hard drive out we can see that uh, the antennas are connected with these uh, high rose connectors here and I can't see any JTAG interface on this side of the board so what we'll do I'll pop the battery out as well and we'll uh, take a quick look at that and I'll remove the PCB just to see if it's on the uh, underside so I've got the board out now and uh, I still can't see any kind of JTAG interface around here but we've got this big heat sink in the way so I'll get that off in a minute but I just want to show you the battery now the battery itself does feel like a uh, quality battery it has got uh, quite a bit of weight to it and uh, it does say on here that it's 4000 milliamp hours but uh, the thing that caught my eye here is it's got a production date of uh, the 11th month 2015 now my friend has had this in his possession since uh, the beginning of July so I'm not sure what's going on there with that production date so I can't find any JTAG or serial interface on this board so my general rule is if you can't find a uh, serial or JTAG interface then I wouldn't attempt to actually flash this because if something does go wrong you're not going to be able to get it back so effectively then you've just got a brick and also interesting to note they've actually gone to the trouble of grinding off the information on all the chips on this board so those three there and also these chips on this side have all been physically ground away so we can't identify them either but there is some information here on the PCB itself and it does say that it's a uh, version 3 version of this uh, PCB board so we probably could uh, find out if we could flash this or not but again because there's no JTAG headers on this I wouldn't actually risk it so here are the two PCB antennas then now that I've removed them from the housing and uh, when they were actually in there so I couldn't take a closer look I did think they were based on the inverted F antenna design but they're obviously not because there's no shorting pin here so these two pieces of the PCB are actually not connected so I double checked that by actually removing the coax from this one and getting my uh, multimeter out just to check for continuity and uh, it is very difficult to actually see because I think this is a uh, cardboard based PCB really cheap but uh, they're in no way connected here the two actually independent pieces of the PCB so what we seem to actually have here is uh, the ground plane here and the uh, main driven element here now when I've taken the measurements it does actually seem to be based off a uh, short dipole design now the main reason why I think this is based on a dipole design is uh, just purely because of the measurements that we've got here now a uh, short bottom fed uh, dipole antenna at these frequencies is uh, made a lot shorter in uh, wavelength measurements than uh, normal because of the interaction between the uh, ground plane being hollow and the main driven element going up through there there's uh, some interaction that actually goes on there and it uh, what that actually allows you to do is make the length of the antenna shorter but still keeping it at uh, the uh, frequency of 2.4 gigahertz 
So instead of measuring the wavelength off at 31 millimeters, what this particular design allows you to do is shorten that. So this is shortened down to 25 millimeters and it's still a resident frequency is still at 2.4 gigahertz, the same as a wavelength at 31 millimeters. Now, I'm not going to go too much more into this, but if you want to do some further reading on this, then uh, I'll put a link where you can start on the Wikipedia page with the uh, Hertzian dipole and the short bottom fed dipole and the measurements there. But uh, basically what we've got here is 25 millimeters here to here and 25 millimeters here down to the bottom here and this uh, slight overlap that we've got here I think that's uh, actually driving this to be a shorter wavelength exactly the same as this uh, dipole here does so I think that's what's actually going on here now whether this particular PCB design is uh, any good or not I don't know all I can say is that it uh, clearly isn't working in this device although I'm not sure yet whether it is a uh, firmware issue or it is in fact the antennas but uh, you've got this uh, taper in here and that probably adds to the des overall design to keep this resonant at uh, a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz but uh, what I'm actually going to do is replace these with uh, the more traditional short dipole uh, design here so the design that I'm going to be using to try and improve this then is uh, this one at the top here it's uh, just a uh, very simple bottom fed short dipole design and uh, I've also been able to use the uh, coax that uh, was originally attached to this so it's not as if I'm going to have to go out and buy any uh, parts to actually modify this so I'm utilizing the coax that's already there. So a quick overview of this design then it's a uh, short bottom fed dipole design and uh, what we've got here are strips of uh, copper tape actually running down the sides and along the bottom of this these three strips here are actually connected and form this long uh, u-shaped pattern and uh, the length from here to here is uh, 25 millimeters which is a quarter wavelength to this particular design and the main driven element runs up through in between uh, these two uh, pieces of the ground element here and uh, there is uh, some interaction that goes off there which enables you to actually make this design slightly shorter than it would be normally and uh, here we've got the start of the actual driven element where it leaves these two uh, planes here and uh, measuring from here to here is exactly 25 millimeters which again is a uh, quarter wavelength so as I say I'm going to try this first just to see if it was a problem with these uh, antennas themselves that was giving us such a weak signal so uh, this is a really easy design to do I've just used some cereal box cardboard and some uh, thin strips of copper tape so I'm fitting the antennas back into the enclosure and they fit down the sides there quite nicely and uh, something else I've done I've just put some clear tape over the top of them just to help protect them but they don't come into contact with the hard drive at all. So now that we've done the modification then let's do the uh, same test as we did in the beginning to see if we've uh, actually improved that signal a little bit so I'll just move it round my back and see how much it drops off. So it's dropped off slightly, not as much as it did previously, but it's still, it's still not great. So I'll just do that again, just to see if it does, and it does drop down, not as much, and uh, yeah, it's still a better signal than it was originally, but it's still, it's still poor, it still drops down quite a bit, just with the action of me putting it round my back and at the end of the day I'm in the same room with both devices it shouldn't affect it that much and finally I've moved it downstairs into the same room that my uh, wireless route is in and the signals completely disappeared so I'm still not overly impressed with the range of that little enclosure so to conclude this uh, video then yes we have improved the range somewhat of this uh, portable NAS drive by uh, modifying those antennas but uh, it's still not great to say you know we've got two dipole antennas in there I would expect to uh, see that range a little bit more than it was so I probably think it's also to do with the firmware as well whatever they've done 
to the firmware because uh, they've ripped off the uh, DD WRT firmware but uh, I will actually look into this to see uh, which version it is and whether it can actually be flashed and see if that actually helps but uh, otherwise as a product I'm not impressed with it the uh, transfer speed is still extremely slow so you know anything big you want to transfer to this you're going to use the uh, USB cable and not the wireless device so it kind of negates uh, you know having a uh, wireless NAS drive and uh, probably if you're streaming a video on this it's so slow it will probably buffer although I haven't tested streaming a video on it yet but uh, yeah I'm not over impressed with this at all so hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, the little dipole antennas that are made to modify this you can use those in uh, lots of different applications and because of the way I constructed them they've got a nice uh, small form factor that you could probably fit them into uh, lots of different uh, modifications so if you did enjoy it please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and hopefully you'll join me for the next one